December 22nd is celebrated as National Mathematics Day in India. Yep, I have no idea how to celebrate Math Day either. But that's not the point. This day is the birthday of Srini Vasuramanu Janshan, who is considered one of the most brilliant mathematicians of all time. He was the second Indian to become a member of the Royal Society and the first to become a member of Trinity College in Cambridge. That's a huge deal. And if you've seen the movie The Man Who Knew Infinity, it was based on his life story. Yet, not so many people outside the math community know about this genius. Ramanujan was born in an Indian village, Erode. His father was a sari store clerk, and his mother took care of the house and sang at a neighboring temple. Srinivasa only started to talk when he was three years old, so his parents were worried about his mental development. But once it was time to start school, it was obvious that he was a really smart young man. He had the best grades in the primary school exams at 10. The future genius mathematician was peaceful, kind, and really curious about everything surrounding him. He was giving his teachers a hard time constantly asking questions, which sometimes seemed weird, like how far is the earth from the clouds? Or who was the first guy on the planet? Srinivasa was good at all subjects and great at math. By the time he was 11, he had mastered differential equations. I'm still a bit afraid of those, to be honest. At 13, he was already developing his own mathematics summing geometric and arithmetic series. Finding friends wasn't that easy for the math prodigy because everyone, including the teachers, was in awe of his mathematical talents. The senior math teacher of his high school was so impressed with Srinivasa's skills that he asked the student to create a conflict-free timetable for the entire school. At 15, the young man received a book that would inspire him to work on his own theorems and ideas. George Shoebridge Carr's Synopsis of Elementary Results in Pure and Applied Mathematics, Volume 2. He mastered college-level math in high school and graduated with a scholarship that allowed him to start with a college education. He began his studies but lost the scholarship after just one year. Mathematics was taking all his time and attention, and he failed all other subjects. Ramanujan knew his family couldn't pay for his studies, so he ran away to a different town. He continued with his research and enrolled at a different college, hoping to get accepted to the University of Madras later, present-day Chennai. When his college math teacher noticed his notepad, he was shocked in a good way. Ramanujan would solve the same problem which his teacher solved in 12 stages in just three stages. Sadly, he only aced the math exam again and wasn't accepted to the university. The math genius didn't give up on his research. He found the topics in Carr's book, which was still his favorite, although a bit outdated. The years to follow were uneasy for the whole of India and for the math genius personally. He didn't have a formal education or a job with a steady income. So, Ramanujan had to go from house to house, asking his friends to help him find a job. He showed them his notebooks in which he kept putting down arithmetic questions and theorems. Because paper was expensive to buy, he would first work out his solutions on slates and only then transfer the final results to the notebooks. He also worked as a math tutor for several students. Eventually, he got a chance to write for the Journal of the Indian Mathematical Society. Now, he had something else to prove his genius rather than his famous notebooks. The bright mind was becoming famous in the scientific world. 1912 became a turning point in our hero's career. He finally managed to get a job as a clerk and later an accountant at the Madras Port Trust. There he met influential people who could appreciate his talent and were willing to help him in his scientific career. The manager of Port Trust, Mr. S. Narayana Ayer, did his best to support Ramanujan. They would stay up late at night to solve math problems. Srinivasa was so into it that he said he sometimes worked out formulas and theorems in his sleep and would then wake up in the middle of the night to put them on the slate in the light of a hurricane lamp. The manager also insisted that the math star in the making wrote letters to English mathematicians about his work. He didn't receive a reply from two of them and one was clearly not interested in what they read. Our hero didn't give up and wrote a letter to the famous English mathematician Godfrey Harold Hardy fellow of the Royal Society. Srinivasa was honest and mentioned that he had no formal education and was a half-starving man who was willing to seek a new path in life. 
Hardy carefully reviewed the long list of more than 60 unproved theorems, which Ramanujan added to his letter. He helped his younger colleague get a scholarship for two years and invited him to England. It wasn't an easy decision to make since traveling there was forbidden for members of his class. His mother didn't approve of the decision to go until a deity came to her in her dreams and said she had to do it. So in 1914, Srinivasa departed for Cambridge. Hardy helped his guest fill in the gaps in his math education. In the next three years, the two mathematicians worked together and the results of their work remain important even over a century later. The Indian genius advanced greatly in his studies, especially in the partition of numbers. His papers were published in English and European journals, and in 1918, he was honored to become a fellow at the oldest national scientific society in the world, which was the Royal Society in London. Living in England has affected Ramanujan's health. He returned to India in 1919 and told his wife that working with Hardy was the best thing that had ever happened to him. He had no regrets he'd gone there, despite all the health problems. I guess you can say that gratitude and affection were mutual. Years later, when an interviewer asked Hardy what his greatest contribution to mathematics was, he instantly responded that it was the discovery of Ramanujan. That's something unexpected to hear from a scientist who has reformed British math and written more than 300 papers and 11 books. The Indian math genius was positive he would recover, and he kept establishing beautiful theorems. He sent one letter to Hardy sharing his latest work. Sadly, he passed away at the age of 32 in April 1920. As his wife remembered, he kept doing his sums four days until his final breath. The brilliant scientist left behind three notebooks with around 3,300 results of his work. There was also an uncatalogued collection which is supposed to include what others called the lost notebook. There weren't so many proofs in the notebooks as the author had no intention of publishing them. It looks like he was ready to reconstruct his argument if someone asked him. After he passed away, other scientists edited his papers. It was Hardy's wish that the claims of his friend and colleague would be proven and his work would be published. Ramanujan made a contribution to complex analysis. Number theory continued fractions and also the development of game theory. He is remembered as the man who knew infinity because he managed to find a formula for infinite series for pi, which became the basis of many algorithms used today. Finding the approximate value of pi has been one of the most important questions in the history of mathematics. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.